All right, guys and gals, Mr. Scott back again. Chapter 3, Lesson 2, The New England Colonies. Now, very simple PowerPoint of taking the animations and other stuff out to make it quick so you can use this as a review. Uh, or if you've missed a class, you can use it quickly to, uh, to do finish up your outlines, your note outlines that you might have missed. So, like I said, we're going to make it short, we're going to make it sweet, we're going to breeze right through it. But it's a good test for you for you to have if you need one. Now, uh, today, once again, for our state standards, explain the primary, we're going to figure out why they went there. That's what it boils down to. We're going to talk about the founding of Plymouth Colony, uh, the separatists, William Bradford, the Mayflower, the Mayflower Compact, Squanto. Uh, we're going to analyze the reasons for the settlement of the Massachusetts Bay Colony and the events that led to the key figures of the colony. So, without ado, let's get started. Now, to look at an easier map to show you how the colonies were all divided, you can see here New England colonies in the yellow, you can see the middle colonies in kind of the uh, weird color red, and then the southern colonies in the green. Now, this area right here along the mountain chain was considered the back country, uh, relatively unexplored at this point in history, uh, but also it's, there's a push, there's an ever so gradual push to get more and more land through here, which is going to lead to conflict on many different levels, but today we're here. Now, New England colonies, we talked about how geography uh, kind of bases the colonies, so to say, or what they're going to do once they settle up. Uh, in the south, when Jamestown started out with uh, tobacco, tobacco grew very well in the climate, the humidity, the heat, the, the great soil down south. Up north, it's a different story. The soil is not very good, uh, it's really rocky. Uh, the terrain does not allow for huge plantations and farms, so you're going to see different things in New England than you will actually in the middle colonies or the south. For example, New England, they did have some cattle, they had a lot of fishing, uh, they had fur trapping, you can see the fur trapping up through Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Uh, they did have grains, iron, uh, lumber, rum, uh, of course shipping, and then wells. Uh, that's one thing you will not find in any other colonies would be the whaling right there. Uh, in the future, we will talk about wells played a very important role. Before any type of petroleum or lubricants or anything like that, well oil was used for many, many things, uh, including, uh, that's how they got their light, is the way it basically boils down to. Instead of kerosene or uh, oil lanterns, they had well oil lanterns. But more on that later. Now, today we're going to talk about uh, why it all really matters. Well, they kind of started it for us, for one thing. And uh, what they were doing is they were seeking the freedom to pursue their own religion. Uh, English settlers called, started colonies in New England. Many people still come to the Americas in search of religious freedom. For the very same reason that so many people came uh, in the early 1600s, uh, they still come today searching for that religious freedom. We talked about Europe, the way it was over there. Uh, you had two choices, and that was it. If you really didn't fit into either one of those choices, and in England you had one choice, if you didn't fit in uh, those guidelines, uh, there was persecution, and many people wanted to find a way out. So, not only in America would they find a religious uh, the freedom from the religious persecution, they'd also be able to start a whole new life with a lot, uh, in some instances, a lot of better opportunities than what they would have had back in England. Now, the guiding question is, why did the Puritans settle in America? Well, we have really talked about that. For one, they were seeking religious freedom. Many people in England were unhappy with the Anglican Church, uh, and they were persecuted for their beliefs. Uh, we use the example today of, uh, in, in, uh, in America, you can look at Christianity, and it's kind of like Baskin-Robbins. There are 31 flavors. Uh, there was only one, and that might have been vanilla in England. And if you didn't like vanilla, vanilla, you were in trouble. Now, the Separatists who journeyed to North America were called pilgrims because their journey had a religious purpose. They were making a pilgrimage. Now, we talked about the differences in, Pil uh, in Plymouth and Jamestown. Jamestown in 1607, you're seeing 96% adults coming to, the, coming to the new colony. Well, that just shows you right there. There was not a, a plan to, to stay. There was not a plan to, you know, plant your flag and, and start a new life. They were coming to get rich. That was the main purpose. Now, once they saw that tobacco was going to be able to grow and they could make a lot of money off that, the story changed a bit, but when it first started out, when it first blown over, it was all adults for the most part. Now, Plymouth was a different story. You had 70% adults, 30% children. These were whole entire families seeking freedom from the religious persecution. They were coming here to worship as they pleased and start a new life. 
Now those who wanted to leave and set up their own churches were called separatists. These were the pilgrims that landed at Plymouth, Plymouth Rock. Now they named it Plymouth for the port that they sailed out of in England. Random information for you. But you might see it again as an extra, extra credit question. Now, the pilgrims were led by William Bradford. Now while they were on the boat, before they even got off the boat and stepped foot on ground, they signed the Mayflower Compact. Now this is the first step in the development of a representative government in the new American colonies. Just like you had the House of Burgesses in Jamestown, they're developing their own form of representation uh, and it evolves into what we have today. Now, the Mayflower itself, to give you an idea of how the ship looked, I hope you can see it on the screen. Uh, the Mayflower is not originally designed to be a passenger ship. She was a cargo ship. Uh, the crew slept in little tiny cabins down here on the, the front of the boat. When they weren't sleeping in there, it was used as a kitchen. Now, it had what was called a tween deck. I guess decks in between the top and the bottom decks, upper and lower decks. This was where the pilgrims, the colonists, stayed. It's where they slept. It's where they congregated together as one. Very tight, very cramped. Uh, let's see here. The main hold down here at the bottom of the boat was actually for storing all their cargo. Now, they had this full. They were smarter than Jamestown. Remember, Jamestown came with just the prospect of, of money. They brought a lot of gold mining equipment, gold testing equipment, whereas the pilgrims were a different story. They actually brought some, uh, some sheep, some goats, other animals, and the livestock. There we go, that's the term I'm looking for. Livestock and other supplies so they could hit the ground running and start a new life. Now, back to the Mayflower Compact. I really need to swap that slide around. Written and signed before getting off the ship, it wasn't a constitution, but an agreement to accrue government uh, and that people would actually submit to a majority rule. It was signed by 41 adult males. Sorry, ladies, the time hadn't come yet, but it's on the way. Uh, promising to write and obey just and equal laws for the general good of the colony. Uh, it led to town meetings. Adult male, male settlers would get together, they'd make the laws, and like we said before, it was one of the first forms of self-government. Now, the Pilgrims might not have survived without the help of two Native Americans. Now, we talked about this before. I showed you the video from the story of us. When they got there, uh, they got there at a bad time. They got there near uh, the beginning of winter. Uh, there was no way for them to truly plant crops and grow anything uh, in the area at that time of the year. So they had to survive off of what they had. They had a rough first winter. A lot of people died. Uh, they do come across the Native Americans, Squanto and Samoset. Uh, they helped them, they showed them how to plant corn, uh, potatoes, they showed them how to uh, use fish as fertilizer for the soil, the really sandy soil. Uh, it, it helped them greatly. And this, this allowed them to have great relations with the Native Americans. It, uh, it showed what could have been instead of what Jamestown was, where there was constant conflict. Uh, there was a mutual respect between the pilgrims and the Native Americans, or at least their tribe. Uh, at the time. It led to a few years of peace. Now, the first Thanksgiving is something we'll, it's not going to be tested on, it's something we'll talk about in class, so don't worry about that right now. Now, what was the significance of the Mayflower Com uh, Compact? We've talked about it already. The first step in development of a representative government, uh, it wasn't a constitution. Now, keep that in mind. It was not a constitution, but it was just kind of a crude form. It was an outline for them to follow, uh, for them to make their laws. Uh, it led to town meetings, adult se uh, male settlers uh, would be the ones to make the laws. It was a form of self-government. Now we'll read about that in class, you'll get a copy of it. We'll, we'll hit the highlights on that. Now, new colonies. It started with Plymouth, but then it spreads. Now what role did religion play in the founding of the various colonies? You had a lot of people in England who were unhappy with the way things were going there. And when they start hearing, when they start hearing about the chance, the opportunity to go and start a new life, many of them take it. Now you can see here the various shipping, not the shipping lanes, but where the settlers were coming in from and spreading out throughout the New England area. To break that down a little bit more, uh, tired of religious persecution, a group of Puritans formed the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1629 and they traveled to Boston. Now John Winthrop, was the colony's governor. 
more than 15,000 Puritans journeyed to Massachusetts in the Great Migration. 15,000 doesn't seem like a lot today, but you've got to think that's 15,000 people crossing the ocean just for this, what they call the Great Migration, to escape the religious persecution. The Protestants who wanted to reform the Anglican Church were called Puritans. The Separatists wanted to separate themselves from it. The Puritans wanted to reform it. And think of it this way, to, to reform it, to be, make it pure, you get the Puritans, put two and two together. Now, uh, the Protestants started the Massachusetts Bay Colony, this area right here. Uh, just to give you a better idea of it, you had your Plymouth Colony, you had Massachusetts Bay Settlements. Uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, you'll see right here, these areas right here. They pop up. Uh, in 1639, the towns of Hartford, Windsor, and Wethersfield formed a colony and adopted a plan of government called the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut. Roger Williams, name you're going to see again, and other colonists who were forced out of Massachusetts settled in Rhode Island. Now here's the problem. Let's go back to the map. The Puritans wanted, uh, it's not, they, they wanted to reform the Anglican Church. What they had in Europe or in England, they wanted to bring over here to reform it, tweak it a little bit, and make it better. Now, when Roger Williams and some others kind of started going against that a little bit and were wanting to worship the way they, they wanted to, they ran them out. Basically, in a nutshell, to make it quick and simple, they ran them out. So, Williams and some other colonists who were forced out of Massachusetts, they go down and they settle Rhode Island. So here you've got Connecticut. These groups got together. They adopted the plan to form Connecticut. Roger Williams goes down and he forms Rhode Island because he was trying to get rid, uh, get away from, really, uh, get, a, excuse me, trying to get away uh, from the people of Massachusetts and start uh, an area for religious toleration. Uh, the persecution that they ran from in England, they did here, he kind of faced it here a little bit, kind of the irony of you wanting to escape England for religious persecution. Then once you get here, you have to go away from the colony you're at to start another one because of religious persecution. But he's wanting more religious toleration. So it's kind of one of these areas, it's the first place where you can go and, and, and worship as you please, I guess you could say. Now, once again, Roger Williams and Ann Hutchison. Uh, Ann got in a little bit of trouble. She was having Bible meetings in her house to start talking about the way she thought it should be. Uh, they didn't much like that. So she goes down and she goes in and helps out with Rhode Island. Uh, Thomas Hooker's down here. He's one of the, the main players for Connecticut. Now, which colony was the first of all faiths to worship freely? Just said that one to you about 30 seconds ago. And I'm really hoping that you said Rhode Island. Remember, Roger was in Massachusetts Bay. They didn't like his thoughts too much, so he says, fine, I'm going to go start my own. And he goes down to Rhode Island and starts his own. Now, conflict with Native Americans. Many conflicts, such as King Philip's War, arose between the Native American people and the settlers. Here's why. If you really look at it, you can see the English settlements that were attacked. They represent all these black dots around here. Now, the uh, red diamonds that you're going to see here represent Native American settlements. Here's the issue. All of a sudden, as they're spreading out, as the colonies are growing and, and they're going off and starting their own settlements, you can see what's happening. They're kind of going around the Indian settlements and surrounding them. They're taking over Native American land. So you can see where there's going to be an issue and there's conflict. Uh, the colonies, just kind of a, a quick little chart for a breakdown. The Massachusetts Bay Colony was chartered in 1629. By 1662, Connecticut uh, had split off from it. New Hampshire splits off and starts its own in 1697. And Rhode Island, uh, well, Roger Williams founded it in 1636. So looking at that one more time, charter in 1628, they do their thing. Some people aren't too happy with it. They split off from it. Connecticut's chartered in 1662, but Thomas Hooker founded it in 1636. New Hampshire splits off. Uh, it was founded in 1638. Rhode Island splits off, and it was also founded in 1636. Ann Hutchinson comes down and founds uh, Fort Smith in 1638. 
So just what you need to remember, don't worry about the dates necessarily, but just remember that from the Massachusetts Bay Colony comes Connecticut, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. You know what? And we're going to end it there. Any questions, please feel free to talk to me in class. I hope this has helped you a little bit to review what you might have missed or review for the test. Uh, keep looking for it. We're going to have more up there as we go. Thanks.